Attorney General and gubernatorial candidate John Bruning joins us live on News 5 at 11:30. Thank you for joining us today, John. And you bet. getting right down to business, it's really been a spring full of ads. So often, candidates hide behind political action committees. You've chosen to put your name on an ad, and what message do you think that's sending to voters? Well, I, Nebraskans know who I am. For 12 years, I've been Attorney General. Before that, six years as a legislator. I have the experience it takes to do this job. I'm ready to do it. I'm not going to need on-the-job training. And certainly when it comes to ads, I'm willing to, to point out what I stand for. The issues I stand for, I'm clear about it. Nebraskans know exactly who I am. You know, when Governor Heineman has been asked about endorsements, he said if one comes, it's going to be late April, early May. We're one week away. Have you heard anything from Governor Heineman on whether or not we're going to hear some sort of endorsement? I'm very hopeful. I've worked very closely with Governor Heineman, whether it's prison reform, we worked on an earn time bill requiring inmates to earn their good time, or whether it's illegal immigration, I work with the governor to deny non-emergency benefits to illegal immigrants. I've worked very closely with the governor, and I think in a well-run state where Nebraskans are proud of Governor Heineman and proud of our state, that me working closely with the governor should matter. Now, Will, will he endorse me or won't he? I, you know, I, I pray that he does, but I guess we'll see in the coming days. You know, you bring up how closely you have worked with him. Does an endorsement really make a difference when we've seen you two working together, whether it be with earned time or in everything you've done for the past decade? It, it would be a huge deal. I mean, people respect Governor Heineman. He has the highest approval ratings of any governor in the country. That's because he's been a great governor. This is a well-run state, and I have the experience to step in on day one. I've been tested. People know exactly what I'll do, and I'm not going to need that on the the job training. So his endorsement would be a huge deal, no doubt about it. An issue that applies to you not only as Attorney General, but if elected governor, you know, one of the most talked about issues this past week, this failed execution in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Nebraska has had clear issues with lethal injection, hasn't executed anyone in the past decade. Where do we move forward and how can we learn from what's happened in Oklahoma? Well, in Oklahoma, I think it was just human error. We're going to see okay. as the investigation goes forward. But uh, I, I believe in the death penalty. I think it's appropriate for, for the most heinous murders, just the, the ultimate crimes, not every crime, but the ultimate crimes, the death penalty is appropriate. The governor and I have talked about revising the protocol. We can do that uh, through the Administrative uh, Procedures Act. We don't have to change the law. And so I think in Nebraska, we want to have a method of execution that's legal. And we've had the, the anti-death penalty folks have worked very hard to, to muck up the water. But in the end, we, we need to have the death penalty. I'm going to work very hard to have it as governor. When you talk about changing protocol, you know, the big issue has been lethal injection. Mm -hmm. Can we change our method? Is that something you've talked about or considered? I don't know that we need to change the method. I think we just need to change the protocol. They've make it, made it hard for us to find the anesthetic, which mm -hmm. is now sodium thiopental. There are a couple other anesthetics that work. The common one is propofol, but there are other anesthetics that work. Now, all this, remember, forgets about the victims. You know, we're talking about how we're going to make sure the condemned guy, the bad guy, the murderer, doesn't feel any pain. We need to remember the victims. They're the ones that have gone through this horrible process, the ones that need to find justice. And I don't want to forget those victims. Changing tune a little bit, just yesterday you sent out a release applauding the U.S. Supreme Court for allowing public prayer at town mm -hmm. hall meetings. Why choose to do that through the Attorney General's office rather than through your campaign? Well, I just keep doing my job. I've been doing my job as Attorney General. I'm going to continue doing my job as Attorney General. This was a release I would have issued whether I was in the middle of a campaign or not. I think it's very important that uh, we be able to pray publicly uh, and that we don't have bans on that by the U.S. Supreme Court or anybody else. And so I think it was an important decision. I wanted to point it out. I actually emailed it around to some of my personal friends as well who are in public life and said, you can pray at the school board meeting. You can pray uh, whatever it is that you're doing in public service. It, it's part of our country's heritage. It's part of many of our lives, and I think it's important we be able to do that. As we've said, seven days away, what do you have in store for this really final countdown? It's been a great day, and it's a, we're in a dead sprint. This morning I started at 4 a.m. My last meeting will be at 9.30 p.m. in Valentine, so I'm on the move. Every minute we're trying to maximize it. It's, it's been nothing but fun, and uh, my family's enjoying it. I get to see every corner of Nebraska, which is a pretty rare thing most Nebraskans don't get. I'm having a great time, and I feel very good about our opportunity on Tuesday. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's thank you. 